congratulations on winning. It's a very difficult uh, prize, and I think honestly, this category might be the the hardest to win in because there's so many great small and medium enterprises around the world in the clean tech industry. Uh, but when I saw the finalists, I pretty I immediately thought. Sonnen's gonna win. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. I didn't. Yeah. Well, yes, <laughs> that's because you're Sonnen. But uh, you know, I, it's you guys are doing tremendous work. Uh, we've been covering uh, clean tech as it's grown over the last decade, and uh, you know, solar was a very exciting field. Wind, uh, EVs. In the past few years, energy storage has become sort of the hottest market, right? And. It's very hard to navigate because pricing is very hazy in this market. It is. But it seems, unless I'm naive, uh, Tesla and Sonnen seem to sort of uh, lead the market. They seem to be at the at the front in in various ways. Uh, what? No doubt that. <laughs> and I know you trade. The market. I know you trade a lot of uh, personnel. <laughs> From Tesla. You and yeah, Sonnen and going Tesla. Both directions, going actually. both. Yeah, that's what I mean. Trading, but yeah. both directions. Oh, yeah. so. So, what, what can you, what can you say? Why why are you at the forefront? What is, what makes you so special? Why? Well, yeah. first of all, we were the first to start. We deployed the first uh, residential storage systems already in 2010, in a time when nobody nobody thought was... about it and everybody <laughs> laughed about us. Yeah. And told us, what are you doing with your fucking system? Yeah. <laughs> um, solar power is fed into the grid against the feed in tariff. Yeah. Uh, so um, uh, we are probably the first ones and I think we are developing very fast our technology, especially on the software side we are um, not lazy at all and this is also why we started to deploy new business models, energy services and our aim is at the end of the day not to become the greatest uh, storage system manufacturer, which we already are of course, <laughs> of course yeah. but uh, to become the utility of the future, deploying cheap and clean um, energy to all um, via virtual power stations where we connect lots of storage systems and uh, renewable power production um, and um, uh, monitor and control this and, um, and uh, let customers literally exchange their access, access power among each other. Uh, well, you know, there's no denying uh, globally Tesla has a special kind of brand recognition. I'm, I'm curious. But we, we've seen. You, we've you compare the new Powerwall too with our product design. We need to. We need a. We need an in-depth look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do it. But uh, how do you pull top people from Tesla? What is it that attracts the top, uh, you know, Tesla personnel to say, "Hey, I'm going to go work for Sonnen now." Uh, it can't be. I don't, I don't imagine at this level with these people, it's just cash. And I don't know if. Um, <laughs> you know what? If we would try to beat Tesla by cash. <laughs> <laughs> you would not uh, win. No chance to yeah. win. Yeah. Um, so, so what is something it? else? So what is it? I don't know. I think that first of all, it's a question of company culture, and uh, different people have different preferences regarding the culture they would like to work in. And uh, secondly, it is also a different kind of business model because we don't want to be um, a hardware manufacturer and a hardware provider. And the power wall is at the moment just a piece of hardware. A hardware which is, by the way, commoditizing very fast. Yeah. Um, there are many people um, entering the marketplace offering good products to good prices. So what really makes a difference um, from my point of view for Sonnen is that we are deploying energy services and um, that our aim is not to sell a piece of hardware but to provide clean and affordable energy to our customers. Yeah, and so you know, in that space, I mean, we, we visited uh, Unico's facility in Berlin, and uh, it's a great, great company doing great stuff as well. There's, uh, there's other, other companies out there. Um, STEM. Uh, what, what differentiates you in this space? In this, uh, uh, well, Unico's and STEM, they are focused on, on uh, CNI space or utility scale yeah. storage systems. We don't. We are very much focused on the residential space because we think that the energy transition, which is some kind of modern revolution has to start with individuals yeah. and has to come from... Well, that's a beautiful part of Germany's energy transition and Denmark's is that it's been very focused on uh, I mean, what we call the democratization of energy, democratizing the socio-economic benefit and socio-political power even of, of energy. So it's not just going to big corporations and big utilities, but Absolutely. it's going to the people. So you see that as a core part of your mission is making the basically as we transition to clean tech, democratizing energy more. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that goes, of course, for Germany 
Kennedy, but you, you know, you're in the U.S. We had an article that you beat Tesla uh, to to market with the first energy home energy storage uh, delivery or something. I think a couple years ago. Uh, Australia must be a hot market for you. Uh, what, what do you see? Is your vision just this is the global future? We're going to go in every market as they open up? Or? On the long term run, of course, yes. In the short term run, we are still a small company. We are not a Tesla. We don't have billions of dollars to spend. I mean, even Tesla, they're, you know, it's, it's all... Uh, oh, yeah. You can't grow too fast. But you can't expand too fast. Absolutely. You can't get ahead of yourself too much, right? So we try to, to, to be focused at the moment. We focus very much, of course, on Europe because it's our home base, mm -hmm. no doubt about that, and uh, we focus as well on the US and on Australia, which are all developed markets. We are not at all present in Africa at the moment. And by the US, are you saying California and Hawaii, or is it broader than that? Well, actually, everybody's talking about uh, California and Hawaii, so our expectation when entering the US market was that these are the hotspots. In fact, it's not the case. Wow. We are actually all over the place, the West Coast. Um, is getting more interesting with net metering going away. Mm -hmm. net, metering, net metering is of course uh, not the right incentive for storage, that's uh, for sure. We have lots of customers at the East Coast where um, it is another ball game where everybody is looking for resilience. Yeah. And uh, we have also customers all over the place in Utah, for example, or Nebraska or wherever. And, uh, I'm originally from Florida. What do you think of the Florida market? I mean, this is an interesting market where solar has had a challenge because it hasn't had the support of other markets. Uh, but it's got sunshine and it's got high electricity bills. Absolutely. Uh, and it's got utilities that are sort of, yeah. You know. I know what you, what you mean. <laughs> what, what do you think of that, that market for, for I think storage? This is, a, this is a very interesting market. Absolutely. Are, are you examining it closely and looking to get your foot in the door? Or? We had last week a training there for installers. Okay. In All right. We already active there. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm next door in Poland. Uh, is there any hope for Poland? <laughs> I mean, we... <laughs> you mean in terms of energy? In terms of energy, in terms of... Uh, well, I don't have to tell you that Poland is very much uh, coal-focused still. Um, but I think that the energy transition which is taking part, especially in Germany, and which is a visible thing for all the big utilities also in Eastern Europe, will motivate them to do their homework in time, not to end up screwed like the big German utilities are. Right? And I mean, we, we recently covered the new Lazard report. Uh, have you seen the la latest Lazard report, which puts uh, wind in the US, wind is the cheapest option for new power. Solar is number two now, ahead of not, I mean, on average, basically inching out natural gas. Uh, but they even highlighted in a separate storage article, solar plus storage is becoming really uh, cost competitive on the market. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I mean, yours? no. And I mean, my th my th <laughs> my uh, thought is, uh, I guess my only hope for places like Poland, where they're sort of just trying to block progress, is that at some point, solar plus storage just is that much better the, that people no, will cheaper. say, "Screw it, I'm going for solar plus storage." Do you, do you see that as happening? You see that as yeah. Not tomorrow, but in the next, in the course of the next five years. Yep, five I to, think it will happen. I was going to say five to ten. So next five is even more uh, more exciting and then you know the EV market for me is one of the most exciting as well uh, Germany in, in that case is you know a bit of a hold I, mean, I know they have an incentive now but they're a bit of a hold up because they have a big auto industry and they're uh, protecting of course their market yeah they don't want to they don't want to transition to happen too fast but uh, but obviously the market's growing anyway and even Germany is having pretty pretty good development um, do you see us I mean there, there are synergies but do you see uh, do you have plans in place for connecting what you're doing with EV oh yeah of course we're already doing that. In what kind of ways? Well, first of all, we can of course charge electric vehicles, but we can also, our energy management system logic is able to um, take the car as a part of the ecosystem at home and to, to use the storage in the car. The question is if the car manufacturers want that, mm -hmm. because they are using a same technology which maybe does not like too many cycles. Mm -hmm. no? So if uh, uh, electric vehicles really become an important 
storage device for the residential space is up to be proven, but... And you mentioned Africa earlier, you know, there's Africa, there's India, there's these hot, <coughs> growing, developing markets where, again, solar plus storage is becoming the best option. Uh, what, I mean, obviously, you can't go everywhere, you can't overextend, but what, do you have a vision for them in the long term? Uh, well, I think that uh, those, those uh, developing countries will benefit a lot from, from uh, the technology development going on in the space and also from the significant pri price decrease. And, I deeply believe that storage per solar is the technology for off-grid applications, shortly, because diesel engines are by far too expensive, they are noisy, they are stinky, um, solar plus uh, storage is competitive, and I don't see any reason why this uh, should not be the technology also for those countries. Yeah. If this is our system or the system of somebody else, it's a different question. At the moment I don't see it as our markets again, because we have limited resources and we need to stay focused. So what's the number? Uh, two, two last questions. What's the number thing? Number one thing you guys need. Uh, you know, if you could just, of course, uh, not too extreme, but you know, practically speaking, possibly, possibly speaking, do you need more invest investment? Do you need more uh, awareness? Do you need uh, do you need more people to understand that Sun is 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 uh, competing with the top players in this field? Uh, well, we need we need first of all. Um, more awareness. Still, it's a niche market. So in Germany, it's a niche market. Um, and it's a hard market for normal consumers to understand. If you're not a techie, absolutely, it's, it's hard, hard to understand. understand. It's yeah. very hard to understand. So kilowatt, hard kilowatt hour. Things. What's the difference? What are you talking about? Yeah, it's a very young market still. And in the last couple of years, all the journalists actually um, uh, wrote about storage systems that are cool but by far too expensive, not economic. And now we have to teach the market that um, this has changed. And today we are able to offer economic systems. And um, this is this is what I mean with the awareness. This is exactly what we need. What can cities do? Can you, you know, what can cities do to bring Sona into more people? What can cities do? Well, I think it is absolutely enough that cities start to showcase solutions like this um, in order to to deliver the proof points for their population that this is true and this is working and this is reliable and this is economic because the technology is already there and I even think that no subsidies are needed because um, uh, solar power is competitive, storage is competitive. So demonstration, what, what conferences or uh, awareness raising yeah, events? Conferences or, the, or, or a sample house, something like this, where people can, can come and see and um, something like an energy information center. Mm -hmm. You have some. Sometimes you have. This yeah, yeah, we have, Germany, we have. Yeah? We have these. Uh, I have one in my home city in Florida. I have a you do? Florida Solar Energy House or something. You see? Uh, with many, you know, different types of technologies. I think this is great because yeah. this is the practical, the practical proof that everybody can can go there, can see it, can touch it, can understand it. And in in building codes or incentives, is there anything that stands out? Uh, you know, I'm not a friend of incentives. I yeah. don't like that. <laughs> you're, you're free market. I just think just don't interfere with my. What we need is a stable, a now, stable. Do you run into problems with permitting, or uh, you know, uh, permitting obstruction in some jurisdictions, or at some places in the world? Yes, of course. Spain is a good example. We'll cut those. Oh well, yeah, Spain. <laughs> Spain is a crazy example. Yeah, yeah, it's a scary example. But uh, I think it's getting better, right? It's, it's, it's getting better. Yeah. Okay, I'll it's let. Like... Uh, thank you again. Congratulations again. Tremendous prize.